making videos like a horny rabbit here. Got another block rock and beat. I got my friend Larry here. He's yo, yo, yo. Yeah, that's right. We're going to explain how to use an alternative to channels. Do you think that's, uh, what do you think, Larry? You think that's a good idea? I think channels are not the only way to go, so I'm glad that my friend Larry. Spoken like a true project manager. Spoken like a true project manager. Yes. <laughs> That's a parking lot, that other item. <laughs> channels up front of it. I understand. I'll put a pin in that. Put a pin in that. Uh, so this video is entitled Nix OS 27, Alternative Using Channels. So I must thank Doman Kohar for the tips about this. I was educated by him, thankfully. Um, I had another video where I talked about uh, using channel imports, or I forget what it was titled, but it, it had to do with channel imports. And I noticed when I made that video that I didn't quite understand what I was doing, really. I mean, I, I knew what it, I knew what the system was doing, but it seemed like a clunky way to do things. And it turns out, yeah, it kind of is. <laughs> so don't point that out. And um, the reason, I mean, I don't, I don't think they're fatally flawed these channel things. I think the main problem with them is, and you know, I'm sure people disagree, but I think the main problem with them is they're out of code pointers to repository of NixOS configuration of code. So when you add a channel, you know, you do something like this, you say sudo nix channel, add some tarball somewhere and then give it a name. And the tarball holds holds the code. So it, here we're adding two channels, we're adding one for the home manager, for home manager and one for NixOS hardware. Then you run sudo nix channel update, it downloads those tarballs, puts them somewhere, and then that code just lives on your file system, just like it, you know, you can you can do normal imports from anywhere on your file system. But in the code, you surround in the in the imports equal line, you know, on 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 a line that represents a channel import, you surround it with these angle brackets, and you can point into it um, in such a way that uh, you know as if it lived on your file system. All it did was download, like for Home Manager here, all it did was download the uh, release 2205 TarGZ, and it put it somewhere on disk in, in, a, in a place, and then it has a NixOS directory when it untarred it, so it's just looking for default.nix in, in the NixOS directory of the untarred version of it. And the same thing with NixOS hardware, it's just looking for Lenovo ThinkPad P51 inside the untarred version of archive master targz now these these links that i that we're adding as channels are they're really just they're really just um tarballs of github repositories at certain points in time i think these are tags like these uh so if you go to a, if you if you visit any url of a github repository maintained by a nixos member or some you know, community member whatever and let's say it's called home manager you go there and in this case it's github.com nix community home manager slash archive, and that's a GitHub thing, and then slash branch name dot tar gz, you will wind up with tarball of whatever's in that branch. So that's what that, that means there. And the master branch of NixOS hardware is the other channel. So these are just tarballs. They just download. They get downloaded. It's not, there's no magic happening here. Um, so the, the problems that it has is that it's not totally obvious while reading the code exactly like which set of code a channel name represents because the signifier you know its url is is maintained out of bands like you, you know you add the channel via next channel but it's not referred to it's referred to by name you know home manager download is referred to by home as home manager here but it's not clear that you're actually using the 2205 version of of the home manager tarball you have to go look that up in the channel so and a, and a build that uses different like if i had put the master version of home manager here in the channel it might do something wildly different than the 2205 version. I might not know it. Um, I just might do it by, by accident on two different systems and just have two different outcomes that I didn't expect. Uh, and it's also a little bit, un I still don't quite understand. It's a little bit unclear how to force it, force updates of a channel to tell it, please, yes, please, please, please just redownload whatever's out of that URL. Um, next channel update often does nothing when you think it should grab an updated copy of the repository. Now, I, I didn't, I didn't get to the bottom of that because I talked to Doman and I said, hey, Doman, how do I do that? And he's like, you don't, you know, like, just don't, don't, just don't do that. Just use this other, this other way to do it, which I'll talk about in a second. And so 
apparently many old Knicks old timers seem to avoid using channels at all uh, for what I presume to be the reasons that I just just enumerated. So, um, it don't what Doman said to me is his, just use a thing called Fetch Tarball, and then don't use channel importing a code. Just use this other method of of importing. So what it fixes is that instead of having a code base signifier that, that's out of band, you, you just look at the code and you say, oh, yeah, okay, it's grabbing, you know, this, this is an example of using fetch tarball. HW4 gives fetch tarball, and then it has the actual URL as a string uh, that fetch tarball will, will, will go download. And so in this case, you can both, both the signifier and the code that uses signifier is in the same place, and you just look in one spot for it. You know, or at least if it's not in the same file, at least it's in a file. It's not. It's not out of band. So, and this means what this means is that you just can't configure two acts, two systems accidentally to use different versions of the same repository. You just you just can't do it. You can you can do it on purpose. You just can't do it accidentally. Um, also, the the way that this caches downloaded tarballs, it doesn't doesn't redownload the, the tarball every time you do a build. Uh, there's some some amount of there's some, like some TTL value that it, that it uses. I think by default that's an hour. So like if I run my build, I could run my build a hundred times uh, in the same hour, and it would only download once. But as soon as the hour rolled over, it would down, start download a second version, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can actually change that setting, and you know, in inside of the same code that you've used to define, you know, your your fetch tarball thing, you can just Put this next setting thing, change the TTL to 300, or that's five minutes, you know, or zero if you want to. Um, yeah, so it's just a little bit more predictable and readable, uh, you know, I think, to developers anyway. Um, so the way the way I got here was I, I actually forked, forked the NixOS hardware repository just to hack on a little bit. I wanted to add a few systems to it, and initially I used channels to specify that. So. I did sudo nix channel add, you know, my GitHub generated archive and, and gave it a name nix source hardware fork. I updated the channels. And then in my code, I would do something like, you know, inside of these angle brackets, those specify channel imports as, as opposed to path imports. Um, nix source hardware fork, you know, whatever I just hacked on, let's say I put some stuff in the P51 profile, that would be fine. Um, it worked fine, but I was, I was iterating pretty hard and then I would try to update. I was, I was, I would, I would code hack, 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 commit, push to the GitHub repository, and then I would try to run next channel update, but it just wouldn't pick up my commits, and I couldn't. I didn't. I never got to the bottom of why it wasn't doing that, or how long it would would have taken if I if I had waited long enough, or if there was some setting that I could have fixed. That's when I contacted Doman, and he just said, "Just don't do that." But before that, before I contacted Doman, what I was doing in order to get my updates noticed on the system that I was hacking on as I would I would make a git tag I would push the tag up to the repository and then I'd remove the channel and re-add it at a different URL that was that was that had the tag in it every commit I wanted to test <laughs> which was sucked uh, eventually I gave that up and I just fell back to importing directly from the checkout I have I mean I had the checkout file so I'm, 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 I'm using the system that I'm testing to Make, to make changes to the code, so it wasn't a big deal. But it kind of sucked because I wanted to test this on multiple machines. I had to maintain a checkout in the same place on every one of them, or it wouldn't work, and whatever. And then and then Doman suggested using this fetch tarball thing. So instead of having channel import down here, um, we we use fetch tarball, we point it at this archive, and we assign it to a variable name inside of this let statement above these imports, above this attribute set that has the imports in it. And then I'm, <laughs> I mean, it looks like Lisp in here. I'm not sure what this thing does, to be honest with you, but it uses a replacement of the, the fetch tarball returns a, um, a UR, blah, 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 sorry, a file system path. Um, and then, oh yeah, recursive import. I don't even understand. I'm not even sure I understand. I'm sorry, Domin. I, I didn't, I didn't. I didn't ask you that. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but that's what you do. And it, it boils down to the same thing. So it's totally equivalent to a channel, except with less indirection. You can't use it imperatively with like Nixon, Vince, you know, 
install or however that works. I forget how Nixend. You, you can't just install packages using Nixend. They require channels, or at least they require some some funkiness when you don't use channels. I never use Nixend anyway, so it, it didn't it didn't matter. So anyway, Doma's suggestion of fetch tarball solved any problem every problem I had. I'm a little unclear where it actually keeps the cached copies of the repository. I couldn't quite find them. I didn't look that hard, but I, what I would like to be able to do is just just go to that directory and blow away the caches. Just blow away the cache, when, you know, when, even when I... Because that, that, that tarball TTL is actually global. It's for every, it's for every um, tarball, and that doesn't seem right either. It's, a little, it's still a little messed up. Like, I'd rather just tell it, please, please, really go fetch that tarball. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, well, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching.